What is it like getting Joey back out there with you guys? Um, it's always fun with uh, Joey out there, man. Being himself and having fun, playing ball. Week 17, is that like kind of a renewed sense of energy for you guys to get um, not only like a personality like him, but really a, a playmaker like him yeah, back on the field? absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. You look at what he's done over the course of his career, um, it's always fun when you got a guy like that out there um, on the other side of the For you, yeah. um, is there any kind of relief knowing that Doug, an offense is going to have to pay a little more attention knowing Joey's rushing opposite of you? Football is football. Uh, this relief or whatever you want to call it, I know it's a great feeling. Um, not only having him over there as a player and knowing the dynamic you know I mean, player he is, but understanding the energy and the, and the character that you, you know what I mean, bring in, the, in those situations, in those scenarios where it's a third down and we need a big stop and all those situational, uh, situational moments, you know what I mean? Did, did you notice a difference after week three, after he went out with the way teams were defending you? Man, football is football. I've been playing football for a while now. And, uh, whether it was when he was out there, whether he, you know what I mean, I, I just look at it all the same, you know, whether they chip or whether they slide, or it's football, and so um, just having them out there, I know it's going to be important and big for us. One of the things that Coach Staley just mentioned was that in this locker room, people understand how much work Joey went through to get back. What does that mean to the rest of you guys in here? To... Uh, it means a lot, man. It means a lot when I got them. Um, and the guy, you know I mean, especially where he's at in his career, um, he fights his way back uh, to come out there and be with us on the field. And so, um, definitely something that you know, what I mean, we carry with us. And, uh, we don't take it. We don't take it for granted. Kyle Van Noy tweeted earlier in this week something pretty strong mm -hmm. on his support for Braden Staley and saying that the media yeah. kind of needs to give him respect. You guys made the playoffs yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything. Do you think that Braden gets enough respect or kind of gets the credit he deserves um, for the season or as a head coach? That's the thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know if he gets the respect he deserves. You know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean? We're such a tight unit. And um, I know he gets the respect from the players. And that's all I see. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whether it's outside of here and social media, I don't, I wouldn't pay attention to it. But uh, you know what he means to us and, and you know what he means to this group, and especially on the defense side of the ball. What does he mean to you guys? I mean a lot when you think about um, just the different intangibles and, and, and the situations that we've been through throughout the course of the year. You know, whether you're losing guys, and whether it's different situations where we got to play different because somebody went down, or, you know what I mean? Uh, you look at the end of that, uh, look at the end of that San Fran game. Um, just adjusting and rolling with the punches and, and not and not and not blinking. Um, that's what you want to be a leader. Uh, what, does, uh, what kind of dimension does Drew Trackwell bring to the defense? I mean, uh, when you think about Drew, man, he's a dynamic. He can do. He can. He can rush the pass, or uh, he does a lot of different things for us. Uh, and, uh, so, Drew. Uh, in itself, uh, he's a special player. Carson, as you guys have gone through the kind of roller coaster of the season yeah. and the ups and downs, like, what have you seen from your head coach? Ooh, um, an emphasis on the importance of details um, because it doesn't matter who's on the field, you know, like there's ups and downs, as you've been saying, um, and that's the way football is. You know, this, even if you're having, you know, a, a season like, you know, maybe the Chiefs or the Bills where you're able to have a lot of consistently high games, you're still going to have up and downs as far as your consistency of play. Like, you're trying to keep that high level of play. Um, and so it, it's hard. That's not easy. That's not easy, especially when you have injuries to guys. It starts, you know, making your, your potential a little bit less, right? Your potential with these guys that are you getting paid $20 million a year, you know, helps your, helps your consistency stay at a high level. So when you're losing that, what has to be the message? Look, guys get opportunities. We have an opportunity. Let's get the scheme. Here's the game plan. We're going to execute the game plan. No matter who we have, this is the game plan. That's what we're trying to do. And then the results will speak for themselves as far as if we're able to do that or not. And so that's just talking about state. That's, that's what I'm – most proud of of him, man, because he brings the same message. He changes it up um, every every once in a while as far as what we need to emphasize. But the messaging is the same, and it's it's stern, right? That's what you need. You need it to be you need it to be stern and be like, hey, this is what we're trying to do this week. This is how we're going to do that. When, when you sorry, just one quick follow up. When you do earn a playoff berth, does that help with the message he's trying to deliver? Like just I think the validity of it. The playoff sense? berth is a result of the message that he's been trying to deliver, right? And because he what he was he 
coaching? He's coaching relationships, he's coaching fundamentals, and he's coaching energy. And all those things are on, basically on us as players to figure out how we actually are going to actually go out there and, and execute those in the locker room, on the practice field, and then translate that into the game. Um, and so it makes it makes the, the work environment, I think, a lot more enjoyable because it, it kind of puts the emphasis on the players to actually take ownership and go out there and try to build that the fundamentals, build the relationships with each other, like we're doing dinners on Fridays and things like that, right? That helps us come in together, be looking forward to go out there and work, which also helps us want to work even harder for each other. So it's a great place. When, when, when you lead an entire league in a statistical category like you do, what, what, what is what is that like for you? As long as it's not fumbles, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, there's some good and bad in it uh, from a statistic standpoint, you know, depending on which one it is, obviously. Um, but, you know, it, it feels good. It definitely feels good. I'm not going to say it's something that um, I'm not aware of. Like, I definitely know of it. And it's especially the touchdown category. When I was there last year, it's like, okay, that's kind of the standard that I have. I'm, I'm, that's what I built on this team. That's kind of my, my role, right? Like, we get in the red zone, Austin, you got to score. Um, and so I've pretty much, you know, brought it upon myself. And obviously, we've seen it uh, again this year. You know, we, I'm getting the ball in the red zone. And so that emphasis for my coaches, for my team, the trust is there for Austin to go score. So that's my standard right now. My standard is I got to score a lot of touchdowns. You've got 100 receptions, but 11 of the 16. Of 11 of the 16 touchdowns are rushing. Yeah, yeah. That that plays. I mean, I, I don't know. Look, I'm getting the ball in different types of ways. Joe's trying to get it to me. Justin's trying to get it to me, and it's up to me to try to make something happen with it. Um, so I, I don't really have a preference. However, I'm getting in the end zone. It's great to get in the end zone. <laughs> right. I mean, you get, you've been kind of known as a multifaceted running back and right. the receptions and stuff. Right. But I got to think excelling in the red zones and getting those scores yeah. in the red zone rush. I think what's kept me around and you know what's added value just to me as a player is being able to do mul multiple different types of, of jobs right whether you want to put me in the slot put me in the backfield throw me out of the backfield play me the ball right just be efficient that's what I focus on just being efficient um, and you know just my standards looking at my season so far like I wouldn't say this is my most efficient season um, running or passing, catching the ball. You know, my, my averages are down, and I definitely feel that during the games. Um, not necessarily like at a number standpoint, but just like, hey, I'm not, I feel like I'm not playing at the level that I should be playing at. Um, and that's, that'll have to be taken care of in the offseason. I am what I am right now. Um, but yeah, you know, we are here. We got a playoff berth. We have a chance to make a run. And so, you know, what else could you ask for down here in the late of the season? How much does it help with this late season, too? Because you've had a lot of carries and passes throughout the year that Josh is coming yeah. on and he's fresher due to yeah. his injury and yeah like I mean you, you see me like you know I'm 5'8 you know 195 you know and so my body after taking all these hits for this long and now we had another game you know on the season a couple years back and so my body definitely does like coach asked me today like do you feel good I was like no I don't feel good but I can go <laughs> you know like my body doesn't feel good I'm not gonna lie to you uh, but that's just you know week 17 in the NFL is to be expected and uh, it's it, at this point it comes down to a, to a mentality and coach taking care of us. You know, like a day like today where you know we're off our feet a little bit more than usual and just really focusing on recovery. And so at this point, it's like okay, the body's not going to feel good, but the bo the mind's got to take over and push us through and make this run. Josh. Joshua Kelly talked about the team dinners bringing everybody together, and you briefly touched on that. How do you think that's helped, you know, that connectiveness translate onto the field and kind of lead to better results? Yeah, it definitely helps. Um, you know, I've been I've been going to as many as I can when I don't have stuff going on on, on uh, you know, Fridays. But it's opened up the door, and you get in a setting where you're not around work, right? So now you're talking about, hey, what you got going on? What are you doing this off season? Like, for me, I'm like a business guy, so I like learning about what other people, what projects people have going on, and that's a way for me to connect with people on a different type of level and a different in a different category. Um, and now I know more about you. You know, even some of you, like I know you're a stand-up comedian. I know Daniel's got you know his DJ stuff going on. So like, just knowing a little bit more about people, I think it makes it a little bit more connected. Where it's like. Like I know you a little bit more personally now. Uh, you know, Jeff and I have been working together for on, on a story, you know, meeting a lot of time. He's met my family, stuff like that. And so um, it, just, it makes it more exciting and just more enjoyable to be around that type of culture when you know more than just the surface level of people. What would it mean to get 120 in the same One, season? 120 what? 100 receptions and the 20 scrimmage touchdowns. Oh, wow. I mean... 
looking back, that would be amazing, you know. And it, I mean, at this point, that yeah, that would help our team right now because I think I need like four more touchdowns to do that. So yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good for the Chargers. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, you've had the 20 touchdowns already, but yeah. also to do it two straight to do it back to back years would be pretty incredible as well. You know, it's like I said, me trying to be as efficient as I can. You know, I'm definitely trying to get. I'm trying to get more, right? I'm trying to get more, and that's that's been my role for this offense, as we've seen. Like Austin, you got to score, right? You got to score for us. Um, and I've taken it upon myself. That's my responsibility, and I take it so seriously when I'm down in there. I, de I definitely take it personal, um, and so that's definitely something that I'm indirectly going for, right? I'm I'm not focusing on no. I need to score 20 touchdowns. I'm thinking I just need to score, right? And however many it c comes to be, that's that's what it is. But did you think after three weeks? You'd be leading the league in. Uh, I had no idea what was going to happen because, you know, week three, coming out of week three, I got zero touchdowns, right? And our running average is like, my running average is like two yards a carry, right? I'm not, it's, it was, yeah, it was a different uh, different picture then, right? But that's his, that's his league. There's ups and downs, right? People go into flows. People come into rhythms, out of rhythms. And what what does it come back to in anything? What does it come back to in anything in life, man? It comes back to you being yourself and controlling what you can control, right? Because you can't always, con you can never control the results, but you can control the effort that I put in. And so I told these guys, even in our room, like, look, it is what it is, but guess what? I can only do one thing. I can only do one thing is show up and come work, you know? And so eventually we had the players and caliber of people to come out and get us in a rhythm and now back on track. If you want to see more content like this, check out the link right here.